We've wrapped the identity. We head into the supremacy. That's right. I guess I'll uh, just say that um, Julia Stiles, Nikki, becomes a much larger character in this film. Yeah. And continuing so forth. But, right. Um, right. But again, doesn't feel forced. Doesn't feel forced. Not at all. I, like, it makes when sense she why they up? would want her there. That's right. That's right. Uh, I think we're getting ahead, though. So, like, like right um, away, what we see is um, we see flashbacks. We see the flashbacks. Um so this is flashbacks. Because it kicks it, it kicks right off. Good happy life with Marie on the beach. Yep. Everything's perfect. Yep. But crazy fucks in the CIA still want to kill. Uh, but there's a reason for that. There's a reason for it. Yeah. But there's still. But a it average. makes sense. Which what I like. So they they have the uh, the flashback and you know like it's a recurring thing where he's yep. having trouble sleeping. You know, and I just Except love the part and... where it's just like, well, did you did you write it in the book? It's just like no. Well, that's what we do. And he's just like, it's always something bad. That's why we do it. Because sometimes look at something good, right? And he's just like, I remember something good. And you know he's talking about her mm -hmm. right away. And she knows it too. And you're just like, like man, like they still fit so well together. I know. I know. You know? And it's it's partly disappointing that they didn't have a, uh, a baby. But at the same time, I'm glad they didn't. Because obviously that baby would have to die. <laughs> because she dies in this movie. Yeah, right. Near real the beginning, quick. They, real they quick. Introduce the new asset, which is uh, Carl a young Carl Urban. Yeah. In one of his first roles. This is one of his first roles. Um, I think he, because he's. What nationality is he? Actually, Russian. Urban? No, I don't think he's Russian. Well, I he's, think he's American. Really? I, uh, I thought he. I thought he had an accent. I thought he was one of those. Uh, I could be wrong. Foreigners, to be rude. Yeah, it says, <laughs> says a couple Canadians. Yeah. Well, we're in Canada, so everyone else would be foreigner. So blame Canada. True. 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 Um, um, well, okay, but like before, but he's, she he's gets playing killed, a Russian in this. So yeah. The before Russian she actor. gets killed, though, there's a operation that the CIA is doing, mm -hmm. and it gets fucked up royally, and all of it is blamed on Jason Bourne. So that's why they start looking right. for Bourne again. Right. Right. Because the guy. Carl Urban's character, I wish I remembered his name. He, he has a weird, uh, I don't think I can remember. Some that. sort of Russian uh, sounding name. Yeah. But anyway, he's he's the guy that messes up the initial mission in the first place and pins it on Bourne. And of course, he's got to go kill Bourne because he's got to tie it off. They love saying that too, mm -hmm. by the way. we got to yeah. tie this off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the impetus for this movie. So she gets killed by the asset and... I love the scene, but I also hate the scene because you saw it coming and it made it better. You saw it coming. As soon as they I was like, switched, oh, are you, you going to do it? I was like, oh, oh God, no, uh... he's going to kill her. And then when it happens, you're just like, oh. It, it still breaks my heart. Because in the theater, I was just like, I was emotionally wrecked watching that. I was emotionally wrecked. I watched the, the way he's movie. trying to revive her, and he just lets her like float off into the water, in that like, green water, oh, and she just fades and there's away. Just that light coming in, yeah. And he's trying his best. He knows she's dead, but he is just trying. Yeah. yeah. And then like that angelic float away, and you're just like, oh my god, that's so brutal. So it, it really. And then right really away, he torches sad. his house. Yeah. But keeps the one the picture. One photo. The one photo. I'm getting picture. fucking emotional just thinking about it right now. You know, and he's it's, just fucked. And it, now, and now he's got to get to Berlin. It's because... so sad, but it needed to happen. Exactly. Exactly. The story needed that. To and happen. this is the part where I was getting it with the first movie. They ended it in a way where we didn't ever have to revisit Born and Marie. We never had to. No. Okay. But when they did, at no point was I just like, ugh. Why did they do this? It was like, okay, all right. And everything makes sense. Yeah. You know, none of it was just like, are you kidding me? All of it made sense. Um, and like, and then from there, he, you know, he goes to the Italian embassy, well, to get home. Mm -hmm. Or not to get home, but to, to go to Berlin. <laughs> I love that scene where he takes them out in that office room. Like, the yeah. whole time he's just like, like this. And you got the one... <laughs> blowhard agent he's just like I don't know what you did I don't care one way or another you're gonna play ball <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> and we know we know what the what shit this guy is gonna get into but it's still just funny that like cause you've seen blowhards like that where they're mm -hmm. just like 
Yep, I'm a CIA agent, you know, I'm stationed in Italy, I'm a big shot. And he's yeah. never come close to touching a guy on this level. Mm. You know? And then that whole quick scene just smack, 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 gun out. Okay, you guys are laid out, now he's free. Yep. Clones the guy's phone, steals the cars, gets out of there, and then that's where he starts hearing from, from Pam Landy. Right. Joan Allen, so fucking good. Yeah, so he's having so the, the visions uh, or the flashbacks of a mission in Berlin mm -hmm. that she mentions. He was in Berlin, so he's like, well, I'm going to Berlin. I yep. don't know what the hell's going on. And yeah, Joan Allen, wow. So good. So good. And even better in Ultimatum. But in this, so damn good. So good. And I liked her because she starts off being like, okay, well, we got to get born. We got to get born. We got to get born. And when she starts finding out some of the same stuff that we find out as Bourne finds out, we start. she starts doing the same thing where we go, we're like, well, we know because we watched the first movie. Mm -hmm. She starts going, well, hold on a second. We're not after Bourne. Like, we can't kill him. Like, why does everyone want to kill him? Because everyone's doing all this shady shit. Yeah. You know, and they... She's the only fucking good one. In and it. she's the only one that's sitting there saying, like, wait a minute. Yeah. You know? She's great. And then, of course, that's the reason why they bring in uh, Julia Stiles' character. Mm. Because... Exactly. Because she's she the was only his other handler. person from Treadstone. We find out that she was his handler, and yeah. she was one of the cast-offs from Treadstone that's still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, and they start looking at the books, and they realize that Conklin had a personal fortune that was off the books... And that <clears throat> that was a big deal that he had with the Russian bad guy, yep. who of course is having Carl Urban. And I love that Carl Urban's character was they played him up like a nameless, nondescript assassin. Mm -hmm. He's actually a cop. Yeah, which I thought was great. Caught no uh, secret agent or secret, something, right? Or a a Russian Russian secret special agent. forces or something. Or something Not like that. special forces, but he was a higher up. Yeah, he's higher up. You know, and I thought that was great. You know, because um, we'll get back to him because he disappeared. He kills. He kills Marie, and then because he thinks he's, it's born, he's gone right till the end. Though. He thinks it's born. Yeah, he thinks born's dead. So he says done. it's done. He goes to parties in that all day Russian bar. Yeah, yeah, he, and then yeah, he's and gone that's it. Till the you end don't the see movie. the other character until like they start realizing that born's alive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, yeah, because Bourne is looking for other guys. He's looking for Treadsom. He thinks Treadsom is yeah. alive, so he's looking for other exactly. agents. Treadsom, and that takes him to the one guy's house, and they have that awesome fight scene yep. where the guy's got the tie straps around it, and there's the Venetian blinds, and it's just brutal. Like it's the first real fight scene, and it's just these two agents going at it, and the guy gets a knife. Bourne rolls up a magazine, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you're just like. What? And he beats the fuck out of the guy with the magazine and then ends up killing him. And you're just like, wow, this is so crazy. You know, um, the fight scenes are definitely dialed up. And the hand cam, the shaky hand cam, I think, really adds to the frenetic fate, uh, pace of these fights. It does. 100%. You know, and like I said, too, like in the, when we're talking about identity, I like that because it's all hand cam, for the most part, you know, it and like, you you're brought more in closer to him, so you're feeling how crazy it is that this guy's like, well, I've had flashbacks about Berlin. Mm -hmm. You're talking that I was in Berlin and I did all these things, but hold on a second, this doesn't make any sense. And now they're trying to rectify it. And of course, people are trying to kill him. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> um, and the interesting thing is the... Uh, the swears. There's actually swears in these movies. Only in the first two. Mm -hmm. Like in... First one, he says, fuck it, and tells her, I don't remember anything for the last two weeks, right? Up until the last two weeks. But then in this one, uh, we, he's kidnapped Julia Stiles' character, uh, and he's got her by the gun, and he actually drops the F-bomb again. I remember, like, being surprised by this, because generally you're like... Well, you're allowed one fuck for every PG-13 movie. Oh, I did not know that. As a rule, you're allowed one fuck. You they have, certainly yeah. made it happen. You have two in there. It's restricted. Ah, okay. So they it's a made very a weird rule. But, yeah, that but hence why Wolverine was able to say fuck in a lot of the X-Men movies. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I don't want to get too scatterbrained on this one, but like I love that fight scene in, in the uh, guy's house. Yeah. You know, because it's just, it's brutal, but it's awesome because he has the magazine and then they end up using the power cord to choke him mm -hmm. out. Um, and it, 
what I also really liked was that it just it felt like Born could lose at any point in time. Yeah. You know? And then at the end, they have the scene where he's washing his hands and stuff. And you can just feel like... I almost felt bad for him in these movies because he doesn't want this. He doesn't. He doesn't want any of this. He wanted to have a happy life. You know? Like, even uh, at the end where he's got Abbott, right? I love how he doesn't kill him on it because he's like, she wouldn't want me to. He's just... But he's like, I was halfway around the world. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's nowhere you could go and we wouldn't find you. You know? Murray was dead the second she got in that car and you're just like, fuck, buddy. Like, lay off him. Yeah. He knows this. He tried his best to just live that. And then, of course, it's the tape recording, right? And he's just like, she wouldn't want me to. And, you're, and I love the look on Abbott's face where he's just like, he's like this. And then he just, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, head down. And he's like, son of a bitch. So, um, so many great scenes in this movie, too. Like, the, that fight scene is great. But I even love this, the uh, scene where he's got the sniper scope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and then and he says, like, uh, there was a girl in Paris. I want that girl. And they're just like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Shouldn't be too hard to find her. She's right beside you. I know. They're all like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Look out the window. He's watching us. You know? And, yeah. And then that whole scene where, like, he, again, like, just so good at reading the scene, evading everybody. Like, you know? Yep. Um... I find, like, this one is a bit more believable, too. There isn't too many parts in this movie where I was just like, uh, what? It, it's way more believable. What? Way more. You um, know, like, even the, the that, car chase scene. So good. That car, that chase, car chase scene is, is epic. So it is so fucking awesome. epic. When he's up on the rail getting pushed and he grabs that seatbelt and just holds on. Yeah. So, man. Like, so great. And then, like, he's he's got the guy, and, and Carl Urban character dies. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, you could just, like, again, he's just like, ugh. You know? Uh, that part's awesome. Even the scene where... No, it's right after that scene, actually, because then, now they're after him. Right, they And he goes to the train yard. Yeah. Like, to catch the train, and that's probably, out of the entire series, the train scene... Actually, that and the Waterloo Station and Ultimatum. Those are the probably the two closest like side by side scenes where I think it'll just totally encapsulate Bourne so perfectly. Where so he goes to the train and they're coming for him, mm -hmm. and he just like he looks at the schedule, looks at his watch, books her, chases him. Like they all chase him through this train state. He jumps off the bridge onto the boat. Yeah, fucks his leg up, hooks to the bridge. Climbs back up, and everyone's just like, what the hell is he doing? All just so we can get back on the train <laughs> and totally deke everyone out. Like, I just, it's so perfect because it's, it's ridiculously intelligent yeah. that he was, and, and also physically impressive that he was able to do it. And all he did was looked at the time, looked at his watch, and then deke everyone out. And it's just amazing. Like, it's mm -hmm. just awesome. So Yeah, he's always that one step ahead. Like, he, he can see, like, how everything's going to play out. Exactly, exactly. And and the older I get and the way the world is where everyone's buried in their phones, I, I'm like, I want that more. And I'm really bad for my phone. Like, I, I'm at home and, like, sometimes I wish that I could just put the phone anywhere else in the room sometimes because it's just like, I don't need to constantly be looking or like, oh, I've got, you know, Michelle's watching a TV show that I'm not really too care uh, concerned about. Both phones. Let's play a video game, you know? Right. Like, Whereas before, I would have pulled out a comic book or something. Yeah. Like the phone. Or you would have just watched whatever was on TV. Yeah, I would have watched it. You know, whatever. And, but, you I, know. I find that my attention span is shitty now compared to what I I'm actually saying. have to, like, I've been thinking, like, more and more, I'm like, okay, okay, like, like, and, oh, by the way, I'm wearing black and blue. Born colors. That's what I do. Right. That's what I do. Very nice. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what to wear. I wore a turbo kit shirt. It's got nothing to do with Born. Nothing wrong with that. I have a black muscle top, but I'm not as chiseled as Born. And um, I'm Look, a little more hairier than him. I'm not either. Yeah, but you're not wearing a muscle top. No, that's right. I'm not wearing a muscle top. I need some flappy but, arm hair. But yeah, so like for like the guy just totally reads every surrounding yeah. perfectly. And just is it manages to get out. But the other thing I do like though is that they always play it like there's the possibility that he might not get out. Even though like we're geared, we know the hero's gonna get out, there's always that half a second of doubt. Like in the car chase scene, you're just like up until he does the 
like the the seatbelt thing, you're thinking like I don't know how he's gonna get out of this. Maybe he won't. Mm-hmm. Then he does, right? And it's just uh, the one thing I will say though about supremacy, they do end it in a way that doesn't necessarily mean there's a sequel, but it's more of a sequel bait. Than it, the first it, one. it is a sequel bait, yeah. and it's funny that that end scene um, pops up in the like middle of Ultimatum, which I loved. Which I love. I was in when the you theater. See it just like kind of. I was in the theater with my girlfriend at the time, and when that hit, I literally was like. What? That's for the that's for the last movie. That's the end of supremacy. That's, oh, that is awesome. That's, that's because was... cause, cause they start when they start. Well, I don't know. Are we done with supremacy or? Well, we're talking about the ending. We're talking about the ending. So we're, I mean, it's kind of like the one where he goes like, "You should get some rest, Landy. You look tired." And that's where she. I know. Him, she's like, "What?" She Again. says David Webb. Like she gives him his name, yeah. and then she gives him his birth date, mm-hmm. which I was like, "That's awesome. That's so great that he he now has that." Uh, real quick, though, one of the things that really bothers me about the books is they play the uh, David Webb aspect uh, and Jason Bourne aspects as almost separate personalities. Oh. So he's David Webb when he's teaching or when he's not in a mission, but then a bullet will miss his head and all of a sudden he shifts into Jason Bourne. And I remember just a couple of times I come across it in... Uh, because I, I occasionally I try to read the books again, just because yeah. I mean, there's so many of them. But every time it gets to that point, I'm just like, uh, I, I go back to the books or the movie. Sorry, where I'm just like, I like that it's it's a part of him, mm-hmm. like the born thing. You know, I don't think he could ever really truly be David Webb now because of where he's at. But I do like that she gave him the name. But I like that it's it's just who he is now. There's no separate identities, you know. Right. Right. Or s- mentalities or personalities or whatever you want to call it, you know. But <clears throat> um, who's the better bad guy in the first two? You had Conklin, Chris Cooper, and then you had Brian Cox as Abbott. Who do you think is the better bad guy? Uh well, the most evil would probably be Abbott for sure. Yep, um, I agree. But I really do like Conklin. I like Conklin, but I I but, have a soft spot. I think a lot of that. I think a lot of it has to do with Chris Cooper playing Conklin. If it was another actor, I don't know if I would enjoy the role as much. But I don't know if he would have been as good, though. Exactly. You know. Because I really like Chris Cooper. Yeah, um, um, he was in that movie. What's that movie? Traitor. With uh, Ryan Felipe. This is where it was like they were trying to do their own born movie. Oh yeah. It's not Traitor, though, because Traitor's another board like movie with uh, Don Cheadle. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Treason? Because you had a lot of Treason, maybe? Because like, you had a lot of those type of movies. You still have them. They're still You coming. know, like, we talk about how it did change the genre for the better, but it also did lead into a number of pretenders. The Equalizer and John Wick, uh, Taken, these are all pretenders to the throne, so to speak. Taken lucked out by having a... a crazy cool premise that you hadn't seen in a while. Right. John Wick and John Wick 2 are like, I, I feel like they're very close to being on the same level. Well, I feel like they're on the same level as the Bourne movies. And I haven't seen the second yet, but I know for from what I've read that it really builds on the world of John Wick. And then yep. you realize, wow, this is actually like a really big fucking... Oh, yeah. Because oh. they're talking like cinematic universe now for this. There's a TV show coming for yep. it. Um, they're saying Atomic Blonde is actually in the same universe as John Wick. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, because it's the same director, right? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch Atomic Blonde, actually. You haven't seen it? Nope. It takes place in like the 80s. Right? Yeah, I'm familiar yeah, with the, like, yeah. the the core premise, but yeah. you know, just one of those things I haven't got around to yet. So, um, overall, absolutely phenomenal sequel. Mm-hmm. Like they, oh, they take everything from the first movie, build upon Step those things, it up. expand it at the same time, you know, and then leads into Ultimatum. And Ultimatum, you see that that was the confusing part because when we watch Supremacy, we see the end in New York. Yep. Ultimatum starts before that New York scene back in Russia. Yep. So it's kind of like. Uh, and then the New York thing pops up in the middle of Ultimatum. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. 
I'm not done with Supremacy just yet. Oh! Because this is, like, probably one of the reasons why I love... Well, you say it as you're thinking about it, man, because I got cue cards. The scene where... Because we realize the flashbacks that he's been having is an off-the-books mission that he did. And he kills Nesky. I know where you're going with this. And Nesky is the reason why they uh, framed Bourne at the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. was because Conklin and Abbott got Bourne to kill Nesky because Nesky was trying to uh, get, what was it, free oil or something like that. He was trying to do something where they were going to lose money. They ended up killing him and making money. Mm -hmm. And this is all like just dirty, off-the-records money. But it was supposed to be just Nesky. Nesky's wife wasn't supposed to be there. So now he had he improvised and made it look like Nesky's wife killed Nesky and herself. So he Bourne finds out that they've got a kid. So he goes, he like literally like leaves his whole battle scene to find her just to say, hey, look, your mom didn't kill your dad and kill yourself. I did. The only reason I'm telling you this is because if I were you, I'd want to know. Wouldn't you want to know? You know? And I'm like. That poor girl's just crying. That poor girl's crying. She's gone through half her life that her feel... mom murdered her father. Exactly. So now, it, like, yeah, it's terrible that this kid and this and you're like, sitting there like, yeah. yep, I, I did it, you know. But he's telling her this because he wants her to spend the rest of her life knowing that it wasn't her mom who killed, you know, mm -hmm. her dad and then herself. It was him and that her parents weren't bad. Or her, her mom wasn't crazy, yeah. or whatever the hell she spent throughout the first part of her life, you know. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Like, I love that that was one of the ending scenes. And this is all because Marie changed him for the better. Exactly. Like, I think that if it wasn't for Marie, he would have uh, went through the first movie, mm -hmm. and then I think he would have just probably went into hiding. You know, he wouldn't have like had that. However long. Two years. Two years, yeah. Of, uh, of a life of with her, you know. <clears throat> and yeah, I, I honestly don't think he would have went that extra step to say, hey, look, this is just so you know. Yeah. You know? So two years of happiness and they took it away from him. Yeah. And then you just fucking root for him. It's like, is, that, is that what you thought I was talking about when I was going into this? Oh, yeah, Nesky. As soon as you started, I was like, oh, the whole reason he was in Russia. Yeah, the that whole poor reason. Girl. You yeah. know, like, just so great. So great. And... It's, again, one of those things where you're just like, man, you know, like, yeah, he was a bad dude, but he's not anymore. He's mm -hmm. not that guy anymore. He's something different. Yeah. And that was awesome. Yeah. Definitely redeeming himself. Yeah. Um. <laughs>